cases of the Wuhan coronavirus spread, so are the international efforts to contain the disease. And that's where we start today's edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. A number of countries are formally warning their citizens not to visit Wuhan, China, where the disease was first identified in mid-December. A medicine professor at Vanderbilt University suggests the Wuhan coronavirus won't be nearly as widespread and deadly as the flu, but that people are anxious about it because it's new and mysterious. Several thousand have gotten sick from the coronavirus. It's called that because it's a type of disease that can cause respiratory problems. It's killed at least 80 people in China, and it has spread to several other countries from Australia to the United States, where there have been at least five confirmed cases so far, all of them in patients who'd recently returned to America from Wuhan. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control says Americans should avoid going to the Chinese province Wuhan is in unless it's absolutely necessary. It also expects the number of cases to increase. The impact of the virus isn't just hitting travelers. It's taken a toll on the U.S. stock market as well as a number of international businesses. Airlines that fly to China are offering refunds. So are hotels. Disney has shut down its theme parks in other parts of China. And companies like Starbucks, KFC, and McDonald's have closed their restaurants in Wuhan and some of the areas around it. Also, on the first day of the Chinese New Year, the event that triggers the largest human migration on Earth, the Chinese government says the number of trips taken across China has decreased by almost a third. Countries whose citizens have been stuck in Wuhan are coming up with plans to get them out, but it's not an easy process. Another case has been confirmed here in South Korea of coronavirus as the government has decided to raise the alert level. So it's at the second highest level now. And what this means is that the government steps in and takes control of the situation as opposed to the CDC. It also means an emergency task force will be set up. Now, where we are here is the National Medical Center in Seoul. And this is the area that the government has decided will be the main hospital that will take in any potential patients. There's one patient uh, who has the virus is already being looked after in the building behind us. And you can see through uh, the doors that uh, many of the medical staff are wearing hazmat suits. They don't want to take any risks. And what we're also uh, seeing is that they're trying to figure out how they can move many of the other patients uh, that don't have the virus but that are sick to different uh, hospitals around Seoul, that they, they can free up beds as they are anticipating that they may need them in the future. Now, behind me, you can see a tent here. They're, they're making sure that anyone coming in uh, uh, with fears and symptoms that they may have this virus and not going through the regular channels and not mingling with the rest of the hospital. Now, this is the sort of thing that we are seeing around the world as these cases are increasing around the world. Here in South Korea as well, there are uh, indications that they are going to try and evacuate uh, their citizens out of the Wuhan area uh, in, uh, in China. We know that the United States is doing that. On Tuesday, they'll have a charter flight which will take out about three dozen uh, diplomats and their families. The, uh, the consulate in the area has been shut down as well. Uh, we understand also that Japan is looking to do this and try and evacuate uh, their, their citizens. Australia saying they have around 100 young Australians. They're trying to figure out how to get them out as well. So uh, this really is a case of uh, the, the numbers slowly but steadily uh, increasing in the, uh, the amount of patients around the world and countries looking very seriously at how they can take their citizens out of the uh, worst effect areas in China. Paula Hancock's CNN Seoul. 10 second trivia. Which of these international organizations is the oldest? World Trade Organization, World Health Organization, International Monetary Fund, or UNESCO? The International Monetary Fund was established in 1944, making it the oldest organization on this list. The IMF can help countries keep their currencies stable and avoid major financial problems by giving them loans. The Great Recession, which began in 2007, brought problems for many countries. Nations like Greece and Spain had trouble with huge amounts of debt, and the IMF was one of the organizations involved in addressing that. This year, the IMF expects there to be global economic growth of 3.3%. But because of the scars of the Great Recession, the U.S. government sometimes gives American banks a stress test. How do you deal with stress? Yoga? Maybe a stress ball? How about limiting stock buybacks and shareholder dividends? 
No? Well, congratulations, you're not a bank. That's because after the Great Recession, the Federal Reserve began testing banks on how they would react to economic downturns, stress tests. Those scenarios are things like a 10% unemployment rate or stock market crash, global recession. Basically, the feds will throw a scenario at the bank's books and then see how they would react. Would they have enough money to survive calamity X or disaster Y? That's the quantitative measurement, the numbers. But for the biggest banks, the Fed also looks at qualitative measures. Is a bank set up properly to respond to downturns? Does it have the ability to know where its money even is? How much it's on the hook for? If a bank fails the test, then the Fed can limit how much that bank can offer its shareholders in dividends and buybacks. The logic is, if you don't have enough money to survive a downturn, you shouldn't have enough money to give away to your shareholders. Of course, the banks have come a long way since the financial meltdown, but here's the thing. Some indications show that the tests have become easier to pass. Last year, every major bank passed the test. And even if a bank does fail the test, it can survive it. And that's not it. A new rollback would limit the bank's subject to the stress test to just the biggest ones, the ones with over $250 billion in assets. That means that some huge institutions like American Express would be free from having to go through with the tests. So what might exempting a bunch of financial institutions from these tests mean for the economy? <sighs> right now, NASA has or is participating in six active missions to Mars. It's planning to launch another this summer, and it's looking to hire someone to oversee a new program that's planned for the years ahead. The Mars Sample Return Mission would have the goal of bringing Martian rock and soil back to Earth, and its director could make up to $188,000 a year. But some scientists are concerned that the budget for that mission could be impacted by the cost of this summer's project. At almost $2.5 billion, the Mars 2020 rover is one of NASA's costliest exploration missions. I'm here inside the clean room at JPL and behind me, arguably the most tricked out vehicle in the solar system, the Mars 2020 rover. Among the new features on this rover, the terrain relative navigation, if you see that sort of red triangle, a camera in there is going to be taking images of Mars as it parachutes down into a crater. And why this is important is this camera is going to match images taken from the orbit, and that way they can make much more daring landings, such as in a crater, before they always had the safest bet, a nice flat surface. This will also allow them to avoid hazards, such as a rock outcropping or something else that might endanger the landing of any vehicles. Also, as we look at this vehicle, it'll take some 300 scientists to operate it. You can't see this well, but back down there in the body, MOXIE, why MOXIE is important is it will try to convert this Martian atmosphere into oxygen and down the road, if we're going to put men on Mars and women, we're going to need the ability to convert the Martian atmosphere into breathable oxygen. They can't haul all that oxygen with them, so that's where MOXIE comes in and, as we said, converts it to breathable air. Now, when does the Mars 2020 rover launch? Right now it's on schedule for July or August of 2020. That's when we will be close to Mars again here on Earth. For 10 out of 10, what do you get when you cross snow with a mountain coaster? You get a snowler coaster. And this here one in Steamboat Springs, Colorado is reportedly the longest on the continent at more than a mile in length. It's called the Outlaw. It's not as fast as the roller coasters you ride at Six Flags. This one tops out at about 25 miles per hour, but it lasts 10 minutes at a cost of $20 per ticket. Out in the American West, fans of the Outlaw are not Billy the Kidding when they take a wild bunch of trips, watching the sun dance on the snow, understanding the gravity of the situation, and dropping in like a falling bell star who went off the rails without actually going off the rails. Our viewers in Strasburg, Ohio know a thing or two about snow. They see quite a lot of that at Strasburg Franklin High School. They also know how to subscribe and comment on our official YouTube channel. We hope you do too. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.